velocity. And the moment you mention velocity, there are certain requirements that have to be fulfilled. One of the requirements is that everything that is involved in producing that velocity has to be moving in the same direction. Using the example of a car, if one wheel is going in one direction and one is going in the opposite direction, you can't generate any velocity. They both have to be moving in the same direction. Secondly, that a swing in motion produces the greatest amount of speed within a given arc. Hmm. And the third one is that anything that is swinging and trying to generate velocity moves in the same direction at the same time and at the same rate of acceleration. Well, that's interesting. Can, can you demonstrate that for us so we can see that in action? Yes, we'll bring Erin Zickley right here and then she can de demonstrate that for us. Terrific. Erin, how are you? Good, how are you, man? Fine, thanks. Okay, we're going to use a, a three-headed club to prove this point to everybody. When you strike the golf ball, every part of this club has to meet the ball at the same time. Now we're going to do this with a three-headed club, which will more graphically illustrate what we're talking about. We're going to take the club back to that point, and then we're going to return the club to its starting position so every head reaches that point at the same time. Now put a golf ball there to make it more realistic. So now we're going to take the club back to horizontal. Now we're going to bring every head back so every head meets the ball at the same time. And then from that point on, we will continue with the heads moving in the same direction to the target. So it isn't just trying to get it back to here, but it's to continue everything towards the target. Now, I want you to do it all by yourself. Take it back, then return all the heads to the same point. Now continue to the target. That's correct. The swing is a backward and forward motion. There is no up and there's no down in the definition. Every component part of the swing moves in the same direction at the same time and at the same rate of acceleration. So if that's how we want the club to swing, uh, can you review for us the two sentences that you use uh, to describe how the swing works? And could you instruct Aaron through those? Sure. Terrific. Okay, Aaron. Now as far as the backswing is concerned, the very simple thing, you swing the club head around you with your hands, both hands, so that the club ends up over your shoulder. Okay. All right. Now you use your arms, and your arms are this part of you from the shoulder to the, to the elbow, and you use those parts to swing the whole club forward in the direction of your target. That's correct. Now do it once more, and then this, this time don't stop. Manually, that's so obvious that that swing is very circular, driving the golf ball forward, and yet a lot of players have been told to hit down on the ball, hit down. Can you comment on that for us? Yeah, it's a very common teaching procedure, and I disagree with it wholeheartedly, because going back to the physics principle, if you have an object and you're trying to propel that object in a certain direction with another object, both, both objects have to have the same direction. Whereas if you're going down, it would be wonderful if you're trying to drive the ball into the ground. But I certainly don't want to do that. So it wouldn't be something that goes along with what I'm trying to accomplish. By definition, the swing in motion is a backward and forward motion. It has no up and it has no down. So if you're going to swing the club with the intention of going down, you're violating the definition. So contrary to what most people think, that they will actually hit the ball further by hitting down on it, what they're really doing is directing the energy in the, in the direction of they the don't ground. want to go. And so they're not going to hit it further. That's correct. Manuel, we talk about <coughs> visualizing the swing and the body responding to it, and that that results in everything that we want to happen. Can you demonstrate, by Aaron swinging in the fashion that you just had her, how all of those m movements that we try to create are created? Sure. All right, let's take the backswing first. Okay. Just swing the club as you did before, using the hands to swing the club head over the shoulder. Now, did you try to turn? No. 
Are you turned? Yes. How did it happen? It just happened when I swung the club. That's correct. Okay. okay. Now let's swing the club now. By the way, did your hips turn? Yes. All right. Now, when you swing forward, mm -hmm. let's do it again. Swing the, with the arms forward in the direction of the target. Where's your weight? Over on my left side. Did you shift it? No. Did it shift? Yes. How come? It just responded to the club. That's correct. Now, let's make the same motion okay. in the backswing, and don't do it very hard, because you can hurt yourself if mm -hmm. you don't. I guess so. Okay, respond. Okay. <laughs> That's correct. See, now, when she doesn't respond, her shoulder turn is not there, her hip turn is not there, things have not jived, so to speak. Now, respond. It's an entirely different thing. So, Aaron, when you made this swing, your intention was to do what? Swing the club over my shoulder. And not to produce all of no. these movements. But certainly these are all the movements that every golfer tries to create. Here we're showing how they are created just by swinging the club correctly. How about for the forward swing? Okay, we have the same thing. Swing it back and respond. Now swing it forward and don't respond. That's correct. Now is your weight over on the left side? No. This hurts Have me you more. turned? Yeah. Have you turned? No. Why not? D because my body hasn't responded to this, the That's club. correct. Now let's do the same thing and okay. let your body respond. Okay. Okay, and there we have it again. Everything, every part of her body moved exactly the way it's supposed to because it fitted the motion she produced with the clock. We talked about simplicity earlier. I think you can see how this makes the golf swing so much simpler swinging the club, letting the body respond, and all of those things that we've tried to make happen, we can allow to happen. Manuel, we've seen how simply the body produces all of the motions that we normally try so hard to make happen. What are some of the pitfalls for those players who are trying to do this backwards and creating the motions to get the club to swing? All right. Well, first of all, none of us know really how our body moves. We don't see ourselves and much less in the time element of three seconds that it, makes a, that it takes to make a golf swing. So we really don't know how we move. The swing is over before you realize it. So it takes a long time for me to send my muscles instructions to move a certain way. And by that time, the swing's over. So you don't have the time. That's one thing. The other thing is the fact that we don't know. And the third thing is that everybody moves differently. And it moves differently with each club that we use. That part is subjective, subjective to the club. But the other part is, what is the player trying to do? If he's trying, he or she is trying to move the golf club by moving the body a certain way, the chances are they're trying to move the body the same way for all clubs. And that will never be successful. successful. The other thing is that we are all individuals. And our individualism should never be challenged or compromised just because we're in a sport called golf. We respond to stimulus different, differently, all the time. And even within ourselves, we don't respond to the same stimulus the same every single day. Another problem with trying to get the body to do it is that when you don't know exactly what the body motion has to be, you either do it too much, you don't do it enough, and you don't do it at the proper time. So either way you do it, you're going to fail. So there's an easy way and a difficult way. It's almost impossible. <laughs> it's almost impossible. Because I really have no idea, and I don't want to know what my body is doing. All I want to sense in my body is that it's going along, it's flowing along with the motion I'm producing with my club, that I don't offer the club's motion any resistance. And I just flow with it. 
It's just like a, two people dancing. You can't tell who the leader is because everything just flows. Mm -hmm. I'm sure for so many players, this sounds remarkably simple. I hope it sounds like a relief for them also. While we're talking about swing, another topic that many, many players uh, invest a lot of time in is weight shift, mm -hmm. trying to make their weight shift correctly. Help us with weight shift. How should we understand that? Well, okay. First of all, we all should realize we're making a circle with a golf club. Any time that you make a circle, whether it's on paper or with a golf club, you must have a center. The proof is that if I give you a compass to make a circle, the first thing you do is to set the, set the center around which you make the circle. Now, if that center moves around, you cannot return to your starting point. Now, I'll ask you this question. How interested are you in, in returning the club to its starting point? I'm real interested. Okay. Well, then the center better stay there. So, any time a person shifts the weight, the center moves. It's, it is displaced. And unless that player regains that center prior to contact, it is very difficult and sometimes impossible to get the club hit to be square at the target line when they return. Can, uh, can Aaron demonstrate that sure. for us? Terrific. Now, first of all, I'll have her stay in balance when she goes back. So the weight stays equal, no, no shift, okay? Right. Just, just the way you do it. See, now, she, all she has to do is let the club fall. Let's let it fall. See, and the club is going to be right there without her having to do one single thing. So there's no action that she has to be concerned with to get it there. It just gets there by itself because of the center. Okay? Now, let's take the club back and shift your weight. You mean shift it first and then... Well, just shift it as you're doing it. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, she's way over here over her right foot. If she doesn't regain that center and she stays there and just moves the club to hit the ball, now just do that. Her club, by the time it gets to the ball, is going to be at an angle. Now, if I want to fix that, I have to get her center back where it should be. Now everything's square again. So she would have to do that in her swing to be able to get the club back to that position. So this thing that we're all trying so hard to do to shift our weight really creates a terrible problem in that if we shift it one way, we have to be very good at shifting it back exactly. in just the right amount of time. That's correct. And if we don't, the club will wind up like Aaron's and it's aimed in the wrong direction. That's correct. Now, if she prematurely shifts her weight forward, because one of the things that about the weight shift, we have to know at what rate we have to do it. Because we have to mesh with the speed of the club. Because if we do it too slowly, it gets ahead of us. If we do it too fast, it's, the club stays behind. So we would have to know at what rate we shift in order to mesh with the club speed. Now, who can do that? Let's see what that looks like when a player tries to do it. All right. See, it's very awkward. And now, if we look at the, at the setup mm -hmm. down here, and I shift her weight from there, and I, I make her shift, now her club is aiming to the right. So all she has to do is to get slightly ahead of time in her weight shift, and the ball's going in a new direction. That's correct. So the bottom line with regard to weight shift? Well, you can't do it. You can't do it. The speed of the club does it. Now, in which direction do you shift your weight? On that forward swing. Yes. Do so you shift the weight laterally? Do you shift it with a turn? Do you shift it with a partial lateral or partial? How do you do it? But if the swing is producing it through the swing, you don't have to worry about it. And it does it at the right time. Absolutely. Well, you can watch the iron do it, and it happens perfectly. Okay. And everything is synchronized can't do that when you're trying to do it with your body and trying to do all these things individually. Manuel, finally, many of us have heard for many, many years about swing planes. How about clarifying it, or if you can, simplifying what we need to know about swing plane? Okay. First of all, 
the plane is defined as the angle at which you're swinging the club in relation to the level of the ground. That's all it means. And you have 13 planes. 13? That's correct. You have 13 clubs besides the putter, so you have 13 planes. Now, how would you like to be able to say, hey, I'm on a five iron plane, and try to determine which one it is? The plane is set at the moment you address the ball with whatever length club you have. And if you swing the club, every object which is swinging always remains on the plane on which it starts if it's left alone and the speed is maintained. So I don't have to worry when I swing my club and say I have to stay on my plane. All I have to do is swing the club. So not only are all the body motions dictated and, and presented for us by the club swinging, but the club itself sets the swing plane for us. Well, you set the plane because of the address position, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but the club length and how you stand up at the ball. Now, some people will stand up straighter than other plane, and those things change the plane, but whatever plane you have set, you cannot afford to change. So, then we go into the terminology, flat planes, those are purely relative terms. You will have a more upright plane than I have, but your swing will not be upright. Mm. You will have a flatter plane than I have, but yours will not be flat. Mm -hmm. It's purely relative. But anyway, once we have set the grip on the club, and taken our address position, we have set the plane. Perfect. And we leave it alone. And it's just, an inc it's just the inclination of the swing. It has nothing more to do than it with anything than that. It's not something that a person has to be concerned with. I don't know what my plane is, and I don't want to know. I just don't want to interfere with it. Manuel, can you demonstrate for us the differences in the swing plane that is the result of the club? Sure, I'll, have, I'll do it with Aaron. Okay, now take the club to the top of your backswing okay. and stop. And we will put this club at this angle here. And you will all notice that it has a certain angle in relation to the ground. Okay? Now I'll give her the driver. And do the same thing, just swing the club over the shoulder. And if I do exactly the same thing, you will notice that this is not the same angle. Aaron, did you try to change that angle? No. <laughs> so I truly didn't. truly the swing plane then is just changed by the, the length of the club. And the club. That's all. Very good. Now, if I ask her to put herself right now in the plane of the of the six iron, you think she can? Say no. <laughs> you I couldn't so. because you don't know what it is any more than I do. They kind of look the same to me from my perspective. But it's very same. different. It's very different. You see, and so you cannot create the plane yourself. It's a result of the club you're using in your setup. Good. Okay. okay. Manuel, as we are progressing, uh, we've went through how to create the swing with the club. How about holding the club? Uh, there are several kinds of grips. Can you review those and, uh, and talk about them? All right. Aaron, we'll put you on the spot. Okay. All right, first of all, let's talk about the overlapping grip. Okay. And we'll put the club there so people can see that. The little finger overlapping the index finger of the left hand. Okay. Okay. Now, this is for right-handers. The left-handers would have to switch it around. Okay, now let's go to the interlocking grip. And here the in index finger of the left hand and the little finger of the right hand are interlocked. And this is my least favorite grip, and I'll explain to you why. Okay, now the ten-finger grip. Okay, and now all ten fingers are in contact with the, with the grip. And there's no overlapping and no interlocking. Okay, now... All grips are okay, as long as the hands are in balance. Now, balance in the hands means that they're balanced in relation to each other and in relation to the target line. And as long as they have that particular characteristic, they can use any grip they wish. My least favorite one is the interlocking grip because it forces the right hand to get underneath because they get this really deep in there and then the right hand gets underneath. And that's my least favorite of the three grips. I have had people, very good players, who have a split grip. Hmm. But the hands are very balanced, so they can play okay. Hmm. And can we review with Aaron 
what that balance looks like and when the hands get out of balance. Sure. Now, when the hands are in balance, if I would take a club, take your right hand off, Aaron, and open your left hand. If I would put this club at right angles to her palm, this perpendicular line would be parallel to the target line. To the target line. Now, if I go to, be to the other side, and she does the same thing with her right hand, and opens it up. So when the hands are balanced, we're going to find that this kind of configuration is going to be parallel with the target line. That's correct. And that's, that's what we would call a balanced grip. In relation to the target line. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now you can be balanced in, in relation to the palms, but you can have the palms this way. Let's see that. Well, you so could, it start out balanced. Well, if you had, you could have the, the hands balanced in relation to each other, put this hand this way and put this one this way. Uh -huh. see, and open your hands. Mm -hmm. See, now they're, they're palm to palm, but they're not in balance to the target line. Got it. So that would not be a, a grip that you could use. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, pr it would produce a very peculiar ball flight. And the same thing happens if you go the other way. Sometimes one of our tour players used to have the grip this way. And then if you open your hands, they're palm to palm, but they're not in relation to the target line. So it's very important that which, whichever grip you use, that you have those two balances. And then your chances of having the club return to the ball t square to the target line are almost 100%, as long as the swing is left alone. And that's what we really want to accomplish with the grip, is to make sure that when we swing, the club gets returned square to the target exactly. line. Exactly. Okay. Now there's one other thing that I would like to mention about as far as how you put your hands on there. And that is that the V's that are formed by the thumbs and the forefingers should be pointing to the center of your body, not to the right shoulder. Uh -huh. Now, why does everybody want you to point the, those V's to the right shoulder? Because most people, when they start to play golf, they slice. And that's a mechanism that they're trying to use to keep you from slicing. So that's kind of a compensation to fix something. Right. I see. see. And when we, take, when we look at the V's, What's the best way to look at them? How do we, how do, we do that? Well, if, if you have the V, take your right hand off. Mm -hmm. See, if you, have, if you make the V, see there's a line here and there's a line here. And that's the V. Now, if you would put the thumb here, now the V changes its, its appearance and now the V seems to be pointing this way. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to put it there. You want to make the V, the normal V. Because then if you, want, if you are the type of person that prefers to have the cup there, so you haven't changed the hand any, but you've had the, 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 the hand set properly because the V was set up properly. Understand. I don't like the thumb on the top because you can injure this joint right here because everything rests on that joint. Mm -hmm. And let's see how we look at the V on the right hand. And you do the same thing. See, she has it perfect right there. Her grip is very good. So we've, we've talked about how to hold the club and how to make sure the hands are in balance. What about grip pressure? Can you talk to us about grip pressure? Okay. It's very difficult to tell a person how to grip the club as far as pressure is concerned. Let me have the club. Okay. I want you to hold the club right here with your right hand and hold it at a horizontal level. Okay? Certain amount of pressure? Mm -hmm. Did you think about it? No. Now I want you to hold the club at the same level mm -hmm. from there. No. Same level. Mm -hmm. Same amount of pressure? No. No. So that puts us into the definition of pressure. Hmm. You grip the club with sufficient pressure to control the length of the club that you're using and the speed with which you're going to use it. So instinctively, if we are going to have a short club and make a very slow swing, such as a chipping shot, we would find our grip pressure to be different. Right. That's why I did what I did with Erin. Mm -hmm. When she was holding the club right here, how much pressure did you use to no, hold hardly it? Hardly any. Hardly mm -hmm. any. But when I told you to hold it here, mm -hmm. now you better use a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. But it's all what? It's all instinctive. Mm -hmm. Now, if I would tell you to hold the club like one of our famous golfers said, like a bird, if, if I hold the driver like a bird, the club would fly right out of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't, you can't use any particular stereotype formula for gripping the club because it's different for everybody. If I said to you, grip the club lightly, 
and I told you grip the club lightly and then we tested you on the pressure would it be the same? No. no. Your interpretation of light and her interpretation is completely different. So we, me as an instructor I can't tell you that. I, all I can tell you is that you hold the club with sufficient force to control the length and the speed that you're going to use. So as long as the player does not have some set idea that they need to grip at a certain pressure all the time, if they'll just allow themselves to instinctively hold the club, they'll go ahead and adjust their grip pressure for the task that they're That's achieving. That's correct. Now the one thing that I'm very insistent is that once you've gripped the club, that the pressure remains constant as far as the player is concerned. Mm -hmm. Now the, the pressure rides up and down your hand because of the speed and that's something it does, not that the player does. So the pressure is always dictated by the swing and that once we set the grip, we should maintain that same pressure throughout the swing. Perfect. And allow the, the speed to, to, to make it travel up and down your grip because that's the way, the way it's going to be. And that's, you see, what makes people think that the last three fingers of the left hand grip tighter which they always tell you, grip black tighter with the last three fingers. My question to those people is, how much tighter? <laughs> and they always look at me with a blank look and they can't tell me because they don't know. So hold the club, let the shot dictate the pressure, and maintain it even throughout yeah, the Yeah, I club. call it direct proportion. Good. It's directly proportional to the length of the club and the velocity you're going to generate. And that's as much as I can do as far as pressure mm -hmm. is concerned. But the word constant is always in, the, in there. Whatever it is, keep it constant. Manuel, finally, one last thing that, uh, that I think is really important that, uh, that I've learned from you, and that is your notion of wanting to visually check the grip. Uh, share that with us. Okay. Those people who take the grip by feel always have a tendency to change it. Feels change constantly. Mental pictures don't. Hmm. So once you have the grip and you say or you're told that is the proper grip if you take a picture of that and hold it in your mind and every time you put the club in your hands you put your hands that way regardless of what it feels like and some days they won't feel very good and I have that experience too some days my hands feel terrible but I look at them and I say I don't care how you feel but just the way you belong and I leave them that way and three or four shots of discomfort goes away but I haven't changed my grip so it's very important to take your grip always visually so and check it all the time so if Aaron was going to do this she's looking at her grip making sure it's correct visually not just saying gee that feels comfortable correct because mm -hmm. sometimes it doesn't for whatever reason mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on very hot humid days your hands are very puffy and your hands don't feel comfortable mm -hmm. and if you allow that, that discomfort to control the way you put your hands you'll change your grip feels are subject to change constantly Hold the club so the hands are in balance in relation to each other and in relation to the target line. Place your hands on the club while looking at them. This promotes consistency in the way you hold the club. Placing them on by feel can result in placing them incorrectly because feel is susceptible to change. Pressure should remain constant during the swing. Pressure should be in direct proportion to the length of the club to be used and the speed to be generated. So Emmanuel, to this point, we have the notion of how the swing is created. We have the player holding the club correctly. How about alignment? How do we go about getting the player aligned so that that swing sends the club and the ball to the target? Okay, we'll have Erin come in and we'll work it out with her. Okay, first thing we want to do, Erin, is to get the line, and you do that from behind the ball. Okay, okay so that's, that, that's point number one. All right. Got it? Okay, now you walk in this direction, but you never take your eye off the target until you're even with the ball. Okay, now when you're ready to put the club behind the ball, then you look at the ball and take your eye off the target.
Now don't take your stance yet. Okay. Because now you're trying to check to see if your club is online. Is it? You're convinced that it is? Yes. Okay. Now square yourself off with the club face. Okay, now as you square yourself off with the club face, you should look at the club face so you don't move it while you're moving. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. And you're ready to go. Got it. Okay, now you walk in this direction, okay. but you never take your eye off the target until you're even with the ball. All right. Okay, now when you're ready to put the club behind the ball, then you look at the ball and take your eye off the target. Now don't take your stance yet, okay. because now you're trying to check to see if your club is online. Okay. Is it? Yes. You're convinced that it is? Yes. Okay, now square yourself off with the club face. Okay, now as you square yourself off with the club face, you should look at the club face so you don't move it while you're moving. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. And you're ready to go. Terrific. So that, that process of alignment starting behind the ball is what is going to allow her to make sure that she has the correct target line. That's right. And everything else driven by that. That's correct. Excellent. Now one of the most important things is to keep the, the eye on the target. Because once you take your eye off the target and look at the ball, you lose your line. So when you're walking to the ball, make sure that your eyes look still on the target. Yes, good. Manuel, I'm sure Aaron's experienced this. I certainly have. We go through an alignment process. We feel very good about being lined up with the target, and then all of a sudden a thought creeps in, and we're not sure that we're aligned. How do you handle that? You don't adjust. You move away from the ball and go through the whole process right from scratch. Because if you try to adjust, usually you adjust too much and you over over adjust. So if you're aiming, if you think you're aiming to the right, even if you're not, your adjustment will make you aim to the left. Mm -hmm. So you go through the same process all over again and you wipe out the first process. Manu, when it comes to alignment, probably one of the most common things that is discussed is the use of an intermediate target. Um, tell us about intermediate target and. Uh, uh, what your experience has been. Okay. Well, an intermediate target is one where you, you put a spot between your ball and your regular target. And I find that very few people put the intermediate target on the line that they want. So instead of helping themselves, they're really hurting themselves. If you can put the intermediate target on the line, that can be very helpful. But you better be sure that you're putting that on the target. Now, I think all of you should check your intermediate targets if you use it, and you should do it in this fashion. You pick your intermediate target in front of the ball, and usually what I like to have you do is put a T there, so stick it in the ground so it's w the same as if you were teeing up a ball. And then you put the club on the T, and then on top of the ball, right in the center of the ball. Then you come back here and take a look at it, and you check to see if that line that the club has is where you want to go. And many times you will find that that club is nowhere near where you want to go, even though it's in your intermediate target. And all of you who use the intermediate target should check it all the time. Because unless you put your intermediate target on the line, you're not achieving a correct lineup. Carefully follow the alignment process in each shot. Repeat the process if you're not confident with your alignment. Do not adjust. Manuel, when Aaron was going through the alignment process, part of that was, of course, an address. When you teach the swing, you teach that the body is responding to the club. It looked like when Aaron was addressing the ball that her body was really responding to the club there also. That is correct. Can you walk us through how a player wants to understand that portion of alignment, that portion that we call address. Sure. Now the alignment and the address is all kind of part of the same thing. You, you kind of do these things all at one time. Mm -hmm. So the moment that you take your, your alignment position with the club and you go and set yourself up, it's all part of the same thing. So 
let's let's do this, Aaron. Take your alignment first of all. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, before you take your stance, mm -hmm. go ahead and put the club behind the ball okay. at right angles and be sure that it is there. Mm -hmm. Now, as you take your stance, be sure that the club head and the club is in the center of your stance. Okay. Now, your club head is in the center between your feet and this butt end is at the center of your body. Okay. So, so that's all that is part of the one thing. Now, as far as her body is concerned, it should be extremely comfortable. There should be no gymnastics involved in putting the club behind the ball. Now, I don't like to have pe people try to flex their knees more than, than they're normal. I want them to be themselves because the body will always work its best when it's most comfortable. When you inject some discomfort into the body positions, you're going to have a very great difficult time trying to do something well. You have to be comfortable and your body has to feel that it can move easily from that position. Now, when you try to put yourself in a position which you see a tour player put themselves in, you may not be able to swing the club at all. And we're going back again to the individualistic attitudes that we have. We do things differently, and we are not all going to look the same. Some people are sway backs, some people have round shoulders, some people have very flat backs, and you can't change those things because that's the way they are. So when you put the club behind the ball, you put it down just because you put it back behind the ball without trying to change your normal way. So when Erin takes her address here, it doesn't look like, Erin, that you're trying to do anything in particular. Do you have any particular agenda for your body? No. So it's merely to get the club, get the body in the correct relationship to the club and, and feel comfortable. And feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And with regard to the deep knees and all that, just relaxed. That's correct. Good. We all have, when we sit up at the ball, we all have a certain amount of knee flex. None of us are straight-legged. Mm -hmm. We all have a certain amount of knee flex. And we have whatever we need in order to be able to move properly. Now, you may all be interested in knowing this. If you were playing baseball or playing tennis or being runners, I would ask you to flex your knees to a greater degree. But I don't like it in golf. Now, why do I like it in those sports and think it's essential and I think it's terrible in golf? And the reason is that in those sports, we're jumping to go someplace. Where are we going in golf? <laughs> this is a rotational sport that you're, where you're working around a center line. And so we're not going anywhere. So you have to have the same attitude that you would have if you were building a circle. You have to have the, the ability to turn and be free to do it. Whereas if you get yourself this way, all you can do is go that way easily, but you can't turn. So I, I don't like to feel that a person has to be a gymnast in order to be able to put the club behind the ball. I mean, I, hold your club now and put it in my hand, quick. You didn't do anything special with your body, did no. you? And nobody ever does. Now, why should it be any different when I put the, my hand behind the ball? Why do you have to go through all these commotions and things that people go through? It's not necessary. Manu, we can't, uh, we can't discuss address without talking about the tendency that people have and the instruction they've received to put the hands forward at the address position. Let's talk about that. Okay. I don't like that because the moment you change the hand position, you change your balance structure. Aaron, mm -hmm. put your club behind the ball with a normal balance position. If she's in balance, that's the way she's going to be. Now, if she puts her hands ahead, watch what happens to her shoulders. Immediately her shoulders go left. But her club head went right. So as she puts her hands forward, she's creating two extra lines. So now she's got three lines to contend with. She has a line that goes to the right, one that goes straight, and one that goes left. Now which one is she going to use? Sometimes she'll use one, sometimes she'll use the other. So there has to be an adjustment in her swing to be able to select which one she's going to go with. Now, when she, her shoulders are in this position, the chances are, like we all have, we swing in the direction of the, sh the, direction of the shoulders are set. 
So most of the time, she's going to hit the ball with a pull slice because her swing is going to go left, but her blade is open or out of square. And so therefore, the ball is going to be spinning, but she starts out left. If she gets a little tight when she does this, then everything's going to go right. So there's very, very little consistency in this. Now, if she would do this for us, take your club and put it on top of your, of your shoulder. Just put it on your shoulder, straight up, on your shoulder. Now, quick, hit the ground. Where are your, sh where are your hands? Right in the center. Right in the center. And everybody that does this always has the hands in the center. Now, there's got to be a reason why when they do this and hit the ground, the hands are in the center. What do you think that is? It's where the balance is. Right. That's the only place you can achieve perfect balance. Well, how important is balance in a golf swing? It's extremely important. So why would we want to destroy the balance just because of an idiosyncrasy where we want to hands, put the hands ahead of the ball? I think that's very poor. So you've not been able to find any benefit for putting the hands forward in the golf swing? Not if I hit a normal shot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if we just want a normal trajectory shot right down the target line, putting the hands forward is just one problem on top of another. Right. Now, if you didn't change the shoulders, it might not be so bad. But it's very difficult to move the hands forward and not, ha not, not have the shoulders respond. Now, if you wanted to de decrease the loft of the, of the shot, then you see you would address the ball as though they were, uh, the ball were about six inches or three inches ahead of where it is in this fashion. And then you move the club head back. And in this case, the hands would be ahead. And the blade is still square to the target line. Yes. I see, I see. But then when you do this, you still swing as though the ball were where it normally would be. Mm -hmm. But that's the only time where the, the hands should be ahead. And it's more ahead of the club head rather than ahead of the ball, because the, the hands are really in the same position that they would be if they were here. See, you haven't changed the position of the hands, you've changed the position of the club. Mm -hmm. Very good. But that's the only time where you would have that angle between the club and the arms of that fashion. Manuel, one final point. Uh, we mentioned balance being so important. Talk to us about the balance from the toe to the heel, keeping your weight and balance there. Uh, some players like to have it on their toes, some we see having it back on their heels. Discuss that balance issue for us. Well, I think balance is balance. And I think the body in itself will always want to achieve the best balance it can have. And when you're standing up, just like you are right now, your weight is not on the heels and it's not on the toes either. It's somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. That's where balance is. The body always wants to regain its balance. So if a player starts with the weight on the toes, as the club starts to be swung, the body's going to regain its normal balance. So that means that the weight is going to be moved back. So when you're swinging the club and that happens, you cannot get the club back to its normal position at, ad at address. Now, start with your, w your weight on your toes, okay? Mm -hmm. And just make your, just your back swing. All right. Now you will notice that when she has done this, her weight has gone back to normal. Yeah, she looks real balanced right now. Okay. Now when she returns that club, that club should be short of the ball. It will be on the toe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because her weight from the, he from the toes, let it go out, mm -hmm. from, the to from the toes mm -hmm. has gone to her heels, or not to her heels, but towards her heels. Mm -hmm. And so therefore now the club has moved back as well. Now let's do it in reverse now. Address the ball so that the weight is on the heels. And now go ahead and make your, ba your back swing and stay there. Okay, now you see her balance has been regained. So now when she returns the club to the ball, watch what happens. It'll be on the heel. And that is one of the greatest causes of shanking, to have the weight on the heels because the body regains its normal balance and it throws everything forward and it hits the ball, the club hits the ball on the heel. So then the body has a natural tendency to always want to regain its balance. Always. If we start off balance, 
by the time we get to the our top of our backswing, we're going to be it, back in balance. Back in balance. And out of position to hit the ball. That's correct. So the more your weight changes from front to back, the less consistent your center impact is going to be. So Manuel, when it comes to address, we've talked now about balance. What about the stance itself? Um, it looked like Aaron had a fairly square stance. Can you talk to us about taking a stance and talk, taking a square stance? Sure. With, with a square stance, you can play anything you want. You can play slices and hooks, and you can play anything you want. So it's a very stable and a very common thing to do. A square stance is achieved by having First of all, the club on the ground at right angles to the target line and have your, your uh, body square to the face of the club. Because if you do that, then all these different parts align themselves so that the line of the shoulders and the line of the hips and all that sort of thing are consistent with the line of target, with the target line. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to check it, you will find that the toe line will be very parallel to the target line. However, you don't have to have a square stance to hit the ball straight. In other words, if you were the type of person that would want to have a, a little open stance, you can retract the left foot, but keep the angle the same. Because the moment that left foot fans out, it turns your shoulders. And that's why a square stance is so much more preferable. Now with regard to a square stance, does that mean that your feet, that both feet need to be at right angles to the target? Not at right line? angles, but at the, at the same similar angle. And being human beings, we're not going to do it exactly the same, but mm -hmm. similar. So, so you don't have one at 45 degrees and one at 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. So a stance could still be square as long as both feet are at the same angle to the yes, target line. Yes, that's correct. So we could, in fact, flare both toes out slightly and that would still be a square stance. That's correct. Manny, you've instructed Erin to get herself square to the club face. Right. Uh, let's go into some detail or some further explanation as to how does a player know or how can they come to learn how to determine that they're square to that club face? Okay. That's a very good point. You do it with the club face just like you do with an individual. If you were going to square yourself with me right now, mm -hmm. What was your mind on? Shoulders, hips, feet? What well, was it was on all of me. That is correct. And that's the key. That when you square yourself, and notice that I use the word yourself, I don't say square your shoulders or square your hips or square your feet. I say square yourself with the club face. And that's exactly what I mean. That you do it exactly the same way you would face somebody squarely without worrying about whether your shoulders are square or your hips are square or your feet are square. It's just your general self. And interestingly enough, when you do that, all these parts of you are all lined up properly. But if you start figuring it out, how are Because I don't see my shoulder line. Mm -hmm. And you don't see your hip line. Nope. So how can you line them up? So it's very difficult to do it on that basis. But again, you see, your mind knows all of this. So when you use your mind to square yourself up, it sets everything square, and it's very easy to do. So, Aaron, when you're setting up and squaring yourself, that's the sense you have that, you're, that you are square to that club face. Mm -hmm. I think that's very helpful. Thanks. Place the club head behind the ball, square to the target line. The butt of the shaft is aligned with the center of the body. The body faces the club face squarely. The weight is equally divided between the front and back of the feet or left and right. Stance should not be so wide as to cause tension in the back or forward swing. The mental awareness of what you want to do will instinctively adjust the width of your stance. Because I really have no idea, and I don't want to know, 
what my body is doing. All I want to sense in my body is that it's going along, it's flowing along with the motion I'm producing with my club, that I don't offer the club's motion any resistance. And I just flow with it.